Hey guys, Rexy here, and today we're going to be breaking down the FNAF trailer literally frame by frame. We're going to be going over all the lore, all of the Easter eggs, and some of the craziest theories you guys have ever heard. Now, I've pulled these theories from conversations with my brother, Fusion the Gamer, Daco, and a few of the comments that you guys have left, which I've really loved. I've read every single one of them, and I definitely recommend that you guys keep doing it on this video because they have been so good. And you know what? To be honest, some of them might even be true. Now, we are also going to be doing a huge giveaway to celebrate this huge year that FNAF is going to be having, including Ruin coming out really soon, obviously Help Wanted 2, and the movie dropping in October. I'm going to be giving out three copies of Security Breach, and make sure you watch this video from beginning to end to figure out exactly how to enter into that competition. You can see here, we've got Michael heading home from work. Bro looks really stressed out and we're going to find out exactly why really soon. He's on the phone with somebody here saying he will take any job that they are willing to give him. Now, who is that person on the other end of the phone? Well, it is none other than Steve Raglan, aka William Afton, aka Purple Guy, aka the most horrible man on the entire planet. Now, of course, this guy is going to give him a job because he wants somebody to fill the role of the night security guard at the abandoned pizzeria. Now, he decides to take the job, and the reason he's so desperate is because of this notice right here. Now, this is a notice of delinquency, meaning that the bank is going to take the house if he doesn't pay his bills very very soon that leads him to take this kind of sketchy job to be honest i'm sure it had a lot of red flags but either way here he goes doing the most michael afton thing to do he's putting on his security guard outfit which is like that typical bluish gray and that yellow mustard tie again looking at that no delinquency just showing exactly how desperate he is to take the job now his first day on the job starts off by him driving in to the abandoned pizzeria and you can see just how abandoned this place is i mean look at the freaking sign this thing has been knocked over it's all rusted it's growing moss on it now this frame is really important here and the more i study it the more i come up with these crazy theories you can see here abby is holding this little fleshy bear now the bear is really cute and i think it has some foreshadowing into her relationship with freddy a little bit down the line my theory is that they're going to become friends allies i don't know what the case may be but i have a feeling the animatronics aren't going to be so deadly towards children because then again they're just children stuffed inside of these things i think they could potentially have some risk towards michael or they could be protecting abby later down the line from william himself either way i think this is showing some relationship towards her and freddie down the line i thought they did this so aesthetically well with the stained glass windows and of course to the left here you can see the drawings from fnaf 1 which here's a closer look at them right here oh my god there's rats in the vents shout out to my boy daco <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's our first glimpse at the office, which I thought was really, really well done, and our first Easter egg. So the employees of the month show some of your favorite YouTubers. Uh, here's a closer image of them. Uh, we got Daco, we've got my brother Fusion Z Gamer, we got Razbowski, we've got DJ Starf, uh, 8 Bit Ryan, John Wolf, just to name a few of them. And I thought this was really cool that Scott like paid homage to some of the creators that were there from the very beginning. The office looks really good. You can see the monitors here look so spot on. Even They even have the little red and white cup from the original FNAF 1. Like, bro, this looks so, so good. She gives a brief synopsis of what's going on in the pizzeria, a little bit of history, and I'm assuming his first night on the job and what to expect. Now, at the end of this, Mike says okay whatever he looks like he's about to fall asleep to, to be quite honest and i don't blame him bro i'd be watching netflix all night because i'm not expecting anything to want to kill me in this place and uh right before he does decide to doze off though he gets a little ring at the door which this creepy lady dressed in a security outfit or a police woman's outfit is at the door and she looks a little too familiar with the place even knowing exactly where all the cameras are now she comes in and the first thing that she asks him is do you know about them now in my opinion my theory here is she's talking about the children i don't think she's talking about the animatronics because that's a given obviously he knows that he's guarding like these old animatronics i'm sure he knows somewhat of what fnaf is um and uh, i mean bro she's got to be talking about the children which mike doesn't seem too concerned about to be honest at least it doesn't seem so in the trailer and then it cuts to this really creepy photo now the reason this is so creepy not only does it say b-day here but you can see here there's all the animatronics right you got bonnie you got freddy you got chica and you've got foxy now there are also three humans along with these animatronics they include i'm assuming abby 
Mike's little sister, Mike, and of course, Vanessa. Now, this is definitely Vanessa. It even says on the IMDb, this woman right here is Vanessa, confirmed. There's no theory about this. This is actually Vanessa. Now, I do have a crazy theory that I'm gonna bring up a little bit later, but uh, yeah, this is 100% Vanessa. You can see Mike may or may not have heard some type of bump in the night because he decides to do a little bit of exploring. He grabs his flashlight, and for some reason, he pulls the curtain back on the show stage, meaning I'm assuming he heard something, and obviously in an abandoned building, you shouldn't be hearing much. He pulls the curtain back and this is where he gets his first glimpse at the animatronics, including Freddy and Bonnie and Chica. They're all really freaky and I mean, for whatever reason, that makes him even more tired. Because as he falls asleep shortly after, he gets woken up by the music going crazy, absolutely haywire, the animatronics becoming active and like moving around on the stage and uh, I mean, Bro, it gets really creepy. Also, I do want to point out the fact that the prize counter is super creepy. Like, there is a mask here. My dad wore a mask really similar. My brother posted it on his Twitter not too long ago. Uh, it was a Freddy version of this. It was like a whole onesie. Mike decides after the animatronics become active and everything kind of goes haywire, that he's going to go ahead and flip the breaker. Now, I thought it was kind of weird because he flips it off and then back on at least that's what it looks like in the trailer making the pizzeria like shut down and haywiring bonnie's guitar so shortly after i think he starts taking his job a little bit more serious and he starts looking at the monitors and like switching between the switchboard camera to camera now this scene right here is like so spot on to exactly how FNAF 1 is. I mean, these are the exact, literally the exact camera angles that FNAF 1 shares. And I thought that was so cool. Like this one right here, bro, that is the exact camera angle you guys can see here on the screen as FNAF 1. So super cool. I'm glad that they followed this to a T. And um, yeah, I mean, it's really cool that they're paying homage to this. Again, this is a movie for FNAF fans. And it cuts back to Vanessa, who says something along the lines of, they were looking for these children, they searched the place top to bottom and never found them. Which, we all know exactly why they weren't able to find them. They're inside of these animatronics. Which, uh, I mean, it cuts perfectly to Abby walking up to Foxy, or Freddy, I think it's actually Freddy here. She looks at him and Freddy goes from inactive to active very fast his eyes turn this super bright red and i would say this is not good and it shows another scene here of these robbers in my opinion this is hank by the way um he is one of the actors or one of the characters that is played by bro i forget the name of the actor he's been really active upon like twitter and stuff and uh he's also bonnie's first kill at least i thought so until i saw his twitter where he says don't give up on hank and uh hank might actually not have died to bonnie even though it looks like he did in this scene here on screen this is a really really freaky scene this is when all the children are just sitting around mike for whatever reason staring at him we've got the foxy kid we've got the freddy kid we've got the bonnie kid here the chica girl over there and now this kid in the white top hat this is another little lore Easter egg theory. Uh, I believe that this kid is probably Golden Freddy. At least it has to be, right? I mean, all the other kids are accounted for. So which one would Abby even go into? Unless Abby has a destiny with this yellow bunny here in the picture. Now you can see there's a lot of emphasis on this picture. I mean, the lighting is perfectly put on it and Abby is just blankly staring at it. Now, this yellow bunny looks a lot like Spring Trap to me. And my theory here is that Abby is the missing piece of the puzzle and William wants to put her inside of the Spring Bonnie suit. Now, like I said, all the other characters in the movie have been taken by another soul and they've been accounted for by a child. Now, the only one that could be open here is this golden bunny, AKA Spring Bonnie. You can see that Mike gets a little bit of a change in scenery here as he's running through what looks to be like a mall. He's already dressed as some type of security officer. And if you ask me, my theory here, uh, in the scene where he's like beating a guy up in the waterfall, I think he used to work another job and this was uh, a job that he may or may not have got fired from right before taking this job or 
he's beating this guy up because we all know that sometimes uh, you get these hallucinations in the FNAF universe and maybe he thought he was like some type of animatronic or something to be honest I don't really know how to explain this theory you can go ahead and leave some comments in the comment section down below Moving on with the trailer, you can see this little girl here is staring inside of the mouth of Freddy when all of a sudden she gets pulled in. Now, I don't know if this is Freddy or Golden Freddy. It's really hard to tell, but a child's arm comes out and pulls her in. This could be Cassidy. Obviously, we know Cassidy is the soul that is inside of Golden Freddy. Um, but then again, I'm not 100% sure on that. That's just a theory. Now, things get really spicy here in the in the trailer when it looks like Abby is kind of nervous hiding from somebody. And I think Freddy takes notice to that. Again, I think that Freddy, Bonnie and Chica and, and Foxy are all actually people or I mean animatronics that are looking out for Abby's best interest. And um, I mean, that kind of solidifies it for me now. This is insane. Mike looks really nervous and you can tell exactly why. He hears that hmm, 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 as Springtrap is walking closer and closer to him. I mean, bro, this is so creepy. I mean, I, like, this is the epitome of FNAF horror at its finest. You can see Abby looks really concerned. Shortly after, I mean, Mike gets dragged away and who knows if he actually comes back as he tells Abby to leave the pizzeria. Now cut to this scene here because I think this is really important and actually shows my biggest theory of this entire trailer. I think that Vanessa, as you can see here, not only does she get really hurt, but it looks like she's in a coma. Now, I don't know what happens to most people when they enter a coma, but I'm assuming she got here from some type of head trauma and that could be what has her way waking up as Vanny in the near future. Now, I think this will happen towards the end of the movie and could potentially lead to her turning into Vanny, which would be absolutely insane. And yes, guys, I know a lot of you are saying like it doesn't make sense because it doesn't add up in the timeline, but I will say that for the FNAF movie does not follow the games at all. There's not the same timeline. And bro, how cool would it be to just make Vanessa Vanny? I mean, why else would Vanessa be inside of the game or in the movie? literally mike starts beating up some dude in this fountain and again i'll just briefly touch on this i think that this happened in a previous job i think this is why mike got fired from his original job and it has nothing to do with the actual pizzeria either that or dude is having an hallucination and is losing his mind along the way but it doesn't make sense he hasn't wore a security outfit in any of the trailer while he's been working why would he all of a sudden dress like a mall cop and be at the mall so things get even crazier in the trailer though i mean spring trap gets a little bit closer pulls out a knife as mike is running from him and he turns around in complete horror I mean horror and I cannot blame the dude. We're going to have like a Darth Vader moment where <laughs> where William Afton, aka Steve, goes to Mike and Abby and tells them like Mike, I am your father. Kind of like Darth Vader and towards the end that's actually going to get revealed and things are going to get absolutely insane and just throw the entire theater into a loop and uh, I mean it just makes sense, right? Why would you name a character Mike Schmidt and why would you have a character named William Afton if that wasn't going to be the giant twist at the end. So my theory here is, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, Steve is William Afton who is actually Mike's father who didn't abandon him but instead is kind of trying to lure him into this whole plot in his own twisted way and things get really creepy and we get some sister location vibes anyways guys that has been the trailer breakdown hopefully you guys enjoyed these theories if you have some for yourself go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below i'd love to hear them and i really appreciate each and every one of you guys anyways until next time peace out